There are a lot of videos on YouTube that only show this exact scenario. A vehicle dug in on flat sand and the driver is trying to extract the vehicle using crawl control. We are going to do so much more in this video. We are going to show you when crawl control works and when it doesn't in sand, snow, gravel, rock gardens, moguls, dirt, and in uphill and downhill scenarios. We are going to cover what crawl control is actually doing with your throttle and brakes, and we're going to cover the circumstances under which it will automatically cancel itself. For example, it has a maximum speed limitation, it has brake and transmission temperature limits, and it has other self-canceling functions. So let's get started. To engage crawl control, your engine must be on, put your foot on the brake, you must be in four-wheel low, your shift indicator has to be in drive or in any position other than park or neutral. Your driver door must be closed. Okay, reach up to the overhead console and select a speed using the crawl control indicator. Dial clockwise to increase speed and counterclockwise to decrease speed. Note that if you are underway in crawl control, you can adjust these speed settings on the fly while moving. Next, push the on-off button on the crawl control indicator. On your dash, the crawl control indicator light and the slip indicator light will come on. Now, take your foot off the brake and away you go. That's all there is to it. And here's a quick summary of those steps. All right, in a minute we will get into actual demonstrations of crawl control in sand, snow, gravel, and other terrain conditions. But first it's worth looking at these recommended crawl control speed settings for typical terrain conditions that Toyota has actually published. And as we go through the video, you will see that these recommendations are both useful in some ways and not so useful in others. This information can be parsed in a couple of different ways. If you just look at how Toyota has organized the crawl control speed settings, for downhill you should only use speeds 1 and 2. For uphill, speeds 3, 4, and 5 are available. And on flat terrain, any of the speed settings 1 through 5 are available. And that seems to make sense to me. Now what's interesting, if you look at the chart again and sort the information by terrain type, you will see that the only two downhill terrain types that Toyota recommends for crawl control are moguls and gravel. So that means that the other terrain types on the chart, rock, snow, sand, mud, grass, and dirt, are not okay. And I guess that makes some sense because if you roll up to a hill that is both steep and long and the terrain is snow covered or sand or mud or grass which can be slippery or rock, that can be pretty challenging to the crawl control system. And it can pose some risk because crawl control will cancel itself if the transmission overheats or if the brakes overheat. Well, all right, that was downhill. Now let's look at uphill. If you sort the information by terrain type uphill, you get the same outcome. Only mogul and gravel are recommended for crawl control. And I guess the same considerations apply. Snow could be really challenging for the crawl control system. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to break these rules and we're going to show you what crawl control can and cannot do going uphill in sand, snow, and rock. Now just to finish sorting the Toyota chart, for flat terrain, rock, snow, sand, mud, dirt, and grass are all fine, and speeds one through five are all fine. What's interesting and why I have an asterisk here is they do not list mogul or gravel for flat terrain, and that to me does not make sense. But this may shed some light on it. According to Toyota, Crawl control may not be able to maintain a fixed low speed and may result in an accident if used on extremely steep inclines, extremely uneven surfaces, snow covered roads, or other slippery surfaces. Well, we've tested it and it's true that on icy and really slippery roads, crawl control really doesn't work. And Maybe under some circumstances, moguls could fall into the category of extremely uneven roads. The bottom line is that the Toyota chart really just contains recommendations, but in the real world, those may or may not make sense. So it takes some experience using the system to really understand when it will and when it will not work. So let's now turn to some of our real world tests. Let's go back to this scenario in the sand. So what is crawl control actually doing? First, all you do is steer. You don't step on the gas pedal at all. 
You put your feet flat on the floor and acceleration and traction are completely automated. Crawl control uses sensors to monitor traction and speed so it actually controls each wheel with throttle and brakes. So it takes power from the wheels that don't have power and sends power to other wheels. The idea is that this will minimize your tires digging into deep sand and snow and mud. The system is similar to A-Track and MTS but the main differentiators are First, that you don't touch the gas pedal. Acceleration is completely automated. And second, crawl control is designed to maintain a constant speed. All right, let's add one more thing to the bottom of this list, and that's that noise is normal. This sound, that is the characteristic crawl control sound, and it's normal, you're not experiencing a malfunction. Crawl control also has a characteristic lurching and stopping as it's trying to achieve a constant speed. And there can be vibrations felt through the vehicle body and also in the steering. All this is normal, nothing's malfunctioning. So as you can see, crawl control did get the vehicle out of the sand. And it's important to note that sometimes you need to give crawl control time to do its thing because it's actually in the sand backfilling under some of the divots and giving it a chance to get better traction. Now just for fun, I backed back into the sand divots and activated my front air locker and my rear factory locker just for comparison to see if the twin lockers would get out of these divots as easily as crawl control did. And as you can see, it was no problem. Now things got interesting when we started experimenting with uphill climbs in sand. Steve here is in the high setting trying to get up this hill and did not make it. And we tried this over and over again. This is a good illustration of why the Toyota chart does not have a recommendation for use of crawl control going uphill in sand, snow, or other soft surfaces. Those types of things require momentum. Sand can be a momentum game. Snow can be a momentum game. Mud can be a momentum game. Now this hill is not as steep and we tried it in every speed setting with crawl control and it always got bogged down. Steve then just went up in regular four wheel drive no problem at all which illustrates again that sand can really be a momentum game. On the topic of momentum this is the hill we were trying to crawl control up and as you can see it is a pretty steep hill and crawl control regardless of the speed setting never made it up the hill. But with a little momentum and standard four-wheel drive, it was actually pretty easy to get up the hill. Okay, in the sand, standard four-wheel drive and some momentum will usually outperform crawl control. Now there is one other important takeaway that we got from our crawl control tests in the sand, and it relates to the automatic cancellation features of crawl control. We actually had the system self-cancel due to an overheated transmission. So let's start making a list of all the situations under which crawl control will automatically undergo a self-system cancellation. And the two we've mentioned so far are brakes overheating and your automatic transmission overheating. And we will add more to this list and complete it as we go through the video. It deactivated on its own. It says high transmission fluid temperature. Okay. Now our next interesting takeaway from our sand tests were the downhills. And crawl control actually did really well going over this little step down. But in summary, when it comes to sand, I'd have to say I agree with the recommendations in the Toyota chart that crawl control works best in the sand on flat surfaces. But in the real world, you may find circumstances in the sand, depending on whether it's sugar powder sand or compact sand, where crawl control works well for you. Now let's look at our snow tests. All right, this is a snow crawl control test. We're going to engage in crawl control speed three, and we'll see what it does. Now remember, if you look at the Toyota chart of recommended speed settings, for snow, speeds one through five are recommended, but only for flat terrain. Well, we are going to show you when crawl control works on flat terrain and snow and when it doesn't, but we're also going to break that rule and we're gonna try some hill climbs. Well, crawl control worked fine on this flat stuff, which had a hard crust on top and was relatively soft underneath. But once we got the tires dug in, things change. So you're gonna do crawl control level one? And now. On this first attempt, crawl control pulled the vehicle right out. 
So we decided to have Sam back up and dig a little bit deeper divots and see what happens. This is crawl control in reverse in a deep, deep divot. This tire is buried now, so let's try crawl control forward. So we've discovered the limit of crawl control. We, we have. So this is a deep divot in the snow. In sand. And we had the same outcome on all flat snow surfaces. That is to say, once we broke through the top hard crust into the soft snow, crawl control would fail. The condition of the snow that you are in is certainly a factor. Here, under the surface crust, the snow consisted of ice pellets that were so hard they were like BBs. We were able to work our way through some fairly deep troughs using crawl control, but the effectiveness of crawl control in the snow really has everything to do with the condition of the snow. If you have relatively firm packed snow that offers some traction, crawl control will, will work better. All right, now things get interesting. Let's look at some scenarios of using crawl control to go uphill in the snow. Here Steve is in crawl control level one and he's having no problem going up the hill until he opens the driver's side door. And why did he open the driver's side door? To demonstrate that opening the driver's side door is one of the automatic cancellation features for crawl control. Steve's getting crawl control set up. We're gonna give a speed two try? Yep. We then tried this hill in crawl control speed settings two, three, and five. And the result was all the same. The wheels just dug in and the vehicle stopped. So then we decided to try some momentum and Steve put it into regular four wheel drive, no crawl control, and took a, took a run at the hill and he got right about there. Then just for fun, we decided to try it with my dual lockers and I got even more of a run at the hill and just barely made it over the top. So conclusions for crawl control in the snow, as long as you've got hard pack and a little bit of traction, it's probably going to help. Uh, it's not really that great uphill and that's why it's not recommended for uphill by Toyota. And downhill would certainly not be recommended. All right, remember that the Toyota chart recommended crawl control speed setting three to five for uphill on gravel. Well, we tested that and Steve went up this very loose gravel hill, no problem at all. Well, remember that the Toyota chart only recommended using crawl control for uphill on two types of terrain, mogul and gravel. But well, we tested crawl control on all kinds of uphill terrains. And I have to say that of all the crawl control applications, I was most impressed with its uphill capability, especially on very rocky slopes. This section has a fair amount of moguls through it. I don't know if it's going to pick up very well on camera, but divots like, big divots like this one that the wheels will drop into and rock, rocks to go over. Now I went up this in crawl control speed one and just watch the tires coming up and over some of these big rocks. I have to say I was pretty impressed with the just rock climbing capability of crawl control. And here's a different view of the same hill. And it is somewhat of a strange experience to just be sitting there with both feet planted flat on the floor, you know, no foot on the accelerator, just steering and having this vehicle go up all by itself. So next we tried a couple of downhill tests and I actually took it down the exact same hill that you just saw me go up. And I was equally impressed with its downhill capability on hills like this. I think the only limiting factor is I wouldn't want to do this down an extremely long hill just out of concern that it would activate the automatic system cancellation if the brakes overheated or the transmission overheated. But on short hills like this or, or medium length hills, this worked really well. We then tried crawl control down some other hills, a rocky hill and a steep hill. And this is probably a good time to go over some of the other automatic system cancellation features. One is if the vehicle speed exceeds 15 miles an hour, crawl control cancels. All right, as we watch Steve go down this next hill, just in crawl control level one, let's go over the remaining automatic system cancellation features. If the shift lever is shifted into park or neutral, automatic cancellation. If the four-wheel drive control lever is shifted into four-wheel high, automatic cancellation. 
And then if there's just any system malfunction, automatic cancellation. Well, just summing things up, you know, crawl control may not be suitable for all off-road conditions. If the terrain is too uneven, too steep, or too slippery, it's really not going to work very well. But in the right circumstances, it's really pretty impressive. I think the uphill section that I did that was rocky and mogul was the part that impressed me most with crawl control's capability. It's really one of those things that you have to experiment with a little bit and get a feel for when it's going to work and when it's not. Well, that's crawl control, guys. It's all good fun. Thanks for listening.